our apologies for the delay. We had a little connectivity issue. Hopefully we got it worked out. If I'm not mistaken, where we lost signal was as I was talking about the regulation capabilities. All of our amphi blasts give you the ability to blast from 10 PSI all the way up to full pressure. Today, you're gonna see us start off at about 60 PSI on a door panel, and today we're running 220 grit garnet. The first thing you're gonna see is a dry blast mode, and then we're gonna turn it into a wet blast mode. Once we're done with the wet blast mode, we're gonna go into wash down and dry out, just so you get to see all four of the modes that this equipment is intended to run. So for beginners, I'm simply going to turn my abrasive on. My water is off, my regulator is already preset, so we're at this point we're just going to do a short demonstration of a dry blast with the Amphi Blast. Short little demonstration just showing you this technology can blast dry as well as wet. So at this point, what I'm going to do is temporarily turn the abrasive off, but turn the water on and allow Tommy to get the hose wet. Once I have water coming out of the nozzle, I will turn the abrasive on and he will demonstrate a little bit of a wet blast. Something of note I want to bring up was that as Tommy was in dry bass mode, you saw particles of dust going into the air. When you, when we converted over to the wet blast mode, you still see something coming in the air. That's actually water. If you look at the substrate or the panel that he just blasted, all of that mud that's on it is what the water prevented from going into the atmosphere. So we need to understand that you're still going to see something after it hits the substrate go into the air, but that vast majority of that is simply water, not the dust that you have during dry blast. So you've seen wet blast, now, and you've seen dry blast. What I'm going to do now is take him into a wash down mode. In order to do that, I simply come back and I turn his abrasive off and I turn this unit into wash down. I am also going to turn the blast pressure regulator down to around 20, 30. Make the man comfortable. There's no need for him to handle 50 or 60 or 100 PSI while he's in wash down. Once he has the surface cleaned off, I'm going to shut my water supply off, leaving my abrasive off, turn the wash down off, and I'm going to turn his pressure back up and run enough air through it to dry the hose and then he can dry the substrate. Once your substrate is dry, you're free to inspect, you're free to get a coating on it. Your job site will determine which of these four modes in the sequence in which you use them. We're simply showing you what the equipment technology is designed to do. So what we're going to do now is to use the same abrasive, the same unit, the same hose, the same nozzle, 
and we're going to take some tight mill scale off, but I'm going to turn the unit up to 90 PSI in order to do that. Now that I have him in a higher pressure blast mode, <clears throat> I am going to re-engage my water, wet the hose. Now I'm going to give him abrasive. So you have seen the system in dry mode, you've seen the system in wet mode, we've shown you the wash down feature which we can do again, and you've seen the, bly off, blast, uh, the dry off feature, the blow down feature. You've seen us hit 50 PSI on a car door, and then you've seen us turn around and hit 90 PSI on a tight mill scale plate. We could turn this machine down to 10 PSI and use the soft abrasive and take the, a Coke can and blast aluminum. The, the, the versatility of this equipment is really amazing. And keep in mind that in the blast mode, this technology only consumes about one pint of water a minute. In the wash down mode, you're gonna be around one gallon a minute. So your total water consumption is minimized compared to other technologies in the field. Something else I would like to point out, which is relatively new to our market, is the Schmidt Pistol Grip Dead Man. They are available in pneumatic or electric. They're new to the market. They have a safety button on the side, just like our standard G2 Dead Man, but they are trigger pulled in lieu of the lever type. We've had a lot of good feedback on these. If there's any interest, please let us know and we'll put you in touch with the appropriate people. We're trying to make this equipment not only highly effective and highly efficient, we're also doing our best to make it more ergonomical for you so your blasters are out there in a more comfortable position to make their life a little easier and hopefully get your efficiencies up. That covers the presentation of the Mini Amphi. Please look towards further uh, videos such as this on other technologies of ours. If there are any questions out there, I would be more than happy to respond as much as I can. The question was asked, what size nozzles can the trigger dead man? So where we started with the trigger dead man was actually with the intention of small blast nozzles, if not in cabinet blast situations. I personally had in my mind a four or a five nozzle at the max because I was worried of the thrust on a human's wrist. Well, as we developed this and we started using it, I'm no longer concerned about that. We're using them today in our blast room where we run a number seven in my big blast room and a number six in the back blast room. So the, the, the torque on the human's wrist, on your operator's wrist is not near as bad as what I personally had envisioned. So of course your smaller nozzles, but I do believe and I urge you to try them on your larger nozzles and see if your operators prefer them over the lever. Maximum hose length on the Mini Amphi. The best answer I can give to you is that if you can do it in a dry blast, you can do it with the Mini Amphi. I have not found any limits that the running a wet abrasive blast through the Amphi blast technology that is less than a dry blast technology. We minimize that water to such a point 
that it does not slow down the particles velocity in the hose with to a degree that affects its ability to stay up in the air to keep it from balling up and clogging at the nozzle. If you can do it dry, you can do it with an amphi as long as you're running what we recommend at about that pint or less a minute, which is sufficient to keep the dust down. Bill, we had another. Do you recommend the application of rust inhibitors during the wash down? I am not a chemical expert. That is incumbent upon the, the, the contractors to decide. What I can say is that there are chemical additives to the water that are used in our industry to further flush the surface of its soluble salts and sometimes insoluble salts. And what I can tell you is, is that the Amphiblast technology has shown to be compatible with the water additives that we are familiar with. So on a case-by-case -case basis, we would be more than happy to work with the distributor or the contractor to discuss this matter. But in general, yes, we don't have an issue in the world running the water additives through, that techno through our technology. Seems like that is the end of the questions. I believe we've covered all of the points, unless the peanut gallery has anything else to add. Thank you all for your time. Look forward to seeing you in the future.